Hello, chemistry. This is Mrs. Ellsworth. Well, um, we're going to be talking about different units of measurement. Um, we're going to be using SI units, of course. Um, here are some typical ways that, that you remember, probably, I'm sure, from, from physical science of measuring volume. Um, milliliters was a typical unit that we used with our graduated cylinders. And, of course, we could also measure with a ruler um, centimeters and to get to cubic centimeters. And here is a very important conversion factor that you need to remember or start somewhere in your notes so that you don't forget that one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter of any substance. Now, water alone, pure water, also equals one gram. And that really has a lot to do with how they set up the whole metric system. And so, well, let's get started on this. Now, there are two different types of ways or measurements that you could measure data with. A qualitative measurement, which is a descriptive way of measuring it, like uh, is it sunny outside, is it cloudy? Um, take a pregnancy test, positive or negative. Okay, it's descriptive. Okay, um, a quantitative one actually gives you a quantity, quantitative, a quantity, a numerical value. So if I go look at these bunch of bananas here, I'm just going to look at them and I'll say, hey, um, what is a qual qualitative measurement? We would say that they're yellow, not green, not spotted, not brown, yellow. Okay, another quantity quantitative one would be how much that mass that they have. So, so that could just be some ways to help you understand those ones. Now, when I used to work in a lab, we used to also do a strep test on, on people and when we thought that they had strep throat. And so over here, they've got C for control and T for test. C for control and, oh, there's no line here for test. Well, since the control line goes, you have to have that work. I mean, what if this, this strep kit was poor and did, it wasn't accurate anymore. Anyway, so you have a control that that does light, that does show up and then that way you know that, that this test is, is correct. Now in this case right here is positive, okay, and this case is negative. And they're still ran the same exact way. It's, it's pretty neat and now I, there are more home test kits that are like this, but then people don't quite always understand the difference between positive and negative. So then they, like even the, the pregnancy tests have computer re readouts on them saying that you are pregnant or not because people don't always understand negative and positive. But moving on, we'll be talking mostly about the, qual the quantitative measurements, but we got to remember the SI system. I don't know if you remember that from before, but it's just our common metric system that we use. It is nice because like if a, if a, um, medical facility says that you need so many milligrams of a certain kind of medicine, then we know it, milligrams is over here. So we've got some common SI units, so some basic units here that we go by that help us. Um, I mean, we've got a copy of the the main kilogram weight, or I should say mass that's in France, and other countries do too. And we've all got the master meter too, copies of the original, so that we can all have the same exact unit and that we can develop our, so we can communicate our science better to each nation. Now, SI units, metric, okay? Anyway, so right here are the different types of prefixes, okay, giga. Um, that's becoming more, more common now that we're using um, that, that terminology with computers is for gigabytes, megabytes, kilobytes, uh, kilometers, kilometers, kilo, kilograms. So, I mean, these are prefixes that are used. Here are their, their symbols that they use. Uh, deca isn't used very, very common, neither is hecto. Uh, deci isn't a whole lot either, but the others are pretty common, and you, you're supposed to know these values, so you'll have to have to learn them and it's kind of neat because like if we we're talking about just meters okay so here are some base units so if we're talking about just meters decimeters so that would be that's saying that there are 10 decimeters in one meter okay there are 100 centimeters in one meter there are 100 meters in one hectometer Okay, for those type of things, we can use this con for conversion factors to help us understand them. Um, let's, let's go ahead and look at, oh, kilometers for longer distance. Okay, so you would use, because a kilo means a thousand, so it would be like a thousand meters in a kilometer. Centi means a hundredth. Okay, so there means that, that means that there is a hundred centimeters in one meter. Now, 
Um, how would we write this out for mil, milli and liters together? This is the prefix again, prefix. Anyway, so then it would have a little M and a big L behind it for milliliters. Okay, and kilograms, K, there's the prefix, so it goes in front, so it's a little K, a lowercase K, and a lowercase G for kilograms. And what else have we got here? Oh, centimeters. So it's a lowercase C and a lowercase M to come together for centimeters, like right here. Okay, now I want you to look at these, these units here. Okay, these units, and then there's these units. So Pascal is kind of difficult because it's talking about so much pressure per square inch. So, so it's or not square, it's so square centimeter. I'm sorry. Anyway, I want you to notice that these ones are just plain measurements, like a meter, minutes, meters, uh, grams. You can just measure them straight out, and it's a physical quantity or physical measurement that you just measure straight out. Okay. These ones, though, however, you'll notice that we've got area which you've got two different measurements that were multiplied together. Your volume, you've got three different measurements that were multiplied together. Density, you've got a division of two different types. And Pascal's we won't be using until later on this year, so we're not going to get too heavy into it for this unit. But all of these involve some calculation. So you had to derive your answer from calculating regular physical quantities together to get these. So a physical quantity or a physical measurement is a measurement that you just measure straight out with a with some type of instrument that you need. Okay, you can't do that with these ones. Like on area, if I'm going to me uh, measure the area of my laptop here, the screen on it, I'd have to do the length and the width, and I'd have to multiply them to get. That. See, I have to multiply them. This one, this one, you have to divide. Same with that one. But so you have to derive it through mathematics to get a derived unit. Now there's one common use unit that we use so much in ninth grade science, and that is density. Okay, and that's mass divided by volume. This should actually be a little m and a big V for volume and a big D for density. But I just like this one when they show that it kind of looks like a heart because it helps my students remember that mass is over volume. Okay, so density equals mass over volume. Let's look at some of these. Now, a lot of things we compared to water when we were in ninth grade science. Water has a value of one gram per cubic centimeter. Now, all these other ones that are above it are less than one, so they'll float. So a piece of balsa wood would float. Ethanol could float. Sometimes when it's mixed, it, it, you know, it gets within the water molecules. But these ones are heavier. Okay, These ones have more mass per gram per, per cubic centimeter and look how heavy gold is so gold and water would definitely sink to the bottom all of these ones would okay so that's just a neat way of looking at it so that you can make a comparison and and if you're measuring something and it floats well then heck you know that it's going to have a density less than one now let's look at an example okay we've got a sample sample of aluminum metal that has a mass of 8.4 grams and a volume of the sample is 3.1 cubic centimeters calculate the density of the aluminum well here's our formula d equals m over v mass over volume mass is typically in grams volume is typically either in cubic centimeters or milliliters okay so that's going to be grams over milliliters for example for this one or cubic centimeters Anyway, so here's our answer. We're going to put our put our mass in as 8.4 grams and the volume of 3.1 centimeters, cubic centimeters. And so we'll divide out our answer. And then isn't that nice because the unit is right there for you. Okay, it's right there. Okay, and why did I round this? Well, we'll be talking about that in the next unit on significant figures so that you know how many decimals to write out to because you can't say that that your instruments are much more precise than they are you can only report the precision of your instruments that you have okay and let's keep going now to convert the units we have always done this in, in ninth grade and in seventh grade with me i know you did for sure when you convert units you are given a certain unit and you put it over one okay then you go and you figure out well gee there's kilometers to meters i know that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer so how do I set it up? Well, the kilometers have to cancel out, okay? So they'll cancel out, and then you'll have 1,000 meters times times a 10. And so then the only units that's left is meters. Same thing down here. We've got 3,600. Notice that in metric, they will sometimes put the 1,000 together just like they do, but they don't write commas. 
Okay, because commas in other countries mean decimal, so, so it's, we don't write commas on them. Anyway, so the centimeters are here. What we're given, we put it over 1. Centimeters down here. Okay, there are 100 centimeters and 1 meter, so here is our conversion factor. Okay, and then you multiply it out. we got to divide by 100, so we get 36 meters because those centimeters cancel out. And I just wanted to point out one more time, here is a conversion factor. If you were given it in meters, it would have been, you know, if your problem would have been in meters instead of kilometers, this would have been flipped. And same goes for down here. If you were being given your problem in meters, this would have been flipped also because you have to make sure that these will cancel out. Okay, converting within the metric system. Um, there's other easier ways within the metric system. Here is a, a picture that's actually in your book showing how you figure out which conversion factor that you use. Uh, like I said, in 7th grade and in ninth grade, we make sure that those kilograms cancel out and so that we know that the conversion factor is in this form with 1,000 grams over 1 kilogram, so these cancel out. So you'll take 4.5 times 1,000, okay, and the kilograms cancel out. But there's another way of looking at it too, okay? Well, let's see how far we go down from kilograms to get to grams. Okay, we jump down three times. So now we take that original number we're given, and I put some extra zeros on there. And so now I know that I have to move my decimal three times also. Okay, so how do you know which way that it goes? Because now the answer is 4,500 grams. Okay, how do you know which way it goes? Well, the general rule of thumb, when you have a larger unit and you're going to a smaller unit, so kilometers is bigger than centimeters, then you de generally you move your decimal to the right. Okay, smaller units to larger units, you're going to go the opposite way. You're going to move it to the left. So this would be like a 72,100 centimeters, and this would be like 0 .000316. Okay, so tomorrow, make sure that you know uh, to match the units and their measurements together um, and that you know certain conversion factors. That's a big one we're going to be doing tomorrow. And we'll be, t we'll, we'll be talking about more about this one in class tomorrow in an activity. And then also you'll be able to complete a conversion or two. Now here are some examples. This is on page 40 in your book. Otherwise, you can stop the video right here because on the next slide is where actually the answers to all of these are. And these are, are very acceptable problems for, well, that you should expect me to be able to ask you and you should be able to answer. Tomorrow we'll be working on these in class with a couple of other activities. So um, the answers are coming up. So maybe pause it and work on some of these and then you can get the answers.